Greetings, dear connoisseurs of exquisite jewelry. Today I propose you to travel with me to the east and plunge into a fascinating story about the jewelry of the Iranian queen. Like the glow of the moon, distant starry reflections and iridescent glints of sunlight on dewdrops. This is the impression of the royal diadem Nur ul Ain, worn by the Iranian ruler Farah Pahlavi. It seems as if it was created from the most delightful sparkles of nature. This exquisite and luxurious head jewelry was specially made for the wedding ceremony of the last Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, and his third wife, Farah Deba, of Azerbaijani origin. After two previous marriages ended without heirs' sons, the monarch decided to divorce both his wives. Fate led him to meet the young student in France at a reception at the Iranian embassy in Paris. Without long hesitation, the Shah proposed marriage to this brave, educated, intelligent and attractive girl with an enchanting smile. Among Shah Pahlavi's three wives, it was Farah who was crowned empress, receiving the title of Shah Banu, as she brought him the long-awaited heir. Their wedding took place on 21 December, 1959. Historians agree that the true feelings of love felt only for his second wife, Saraya, Mohammed was truly in love with her. Even so, they had no sons and the monarch had to divorce her in accordance with the law. Nevertheless, the third wife gave the emperor an heir after a year, and their marriage remained strong until the Shah's death. Let us return to the momentous wedding day. On that day the bride was simply magnificent, in a cloud of airy veil, with coal black curls neatly arranged in her hair. A unique tiara with a huge pink diamond sparkled on her graceful head. The platinum frame of this magnificent headpiece was richly decorated with multicolored diamonds, soft pink, yellow, and colorless. At the center of the splendor shone a huge pink crystal weighing 60 carats, Nur ul Ain, the light of the eye. In the sunlight, the royal tiara sparkled and shimmered like a multitude of mirrored eyes. This splendor included 324 diamonds, apart from the largest. The other gems weighed between 14 and 19 carats. Pay attention to the base of the tiara, there you will see a row of colorless baguette diamonds forming cones. The pale pink beauty soaker light is the second largest diamond in the world. Together with the ocean of light crystal, it was part of the large facet diamond, discovered by the French jeweler Tavani during a journey to India in 1642. This diamond, in turn, was embedded in the peacock throne of Shah Jahan the Mughal Emperor. However, in 1739, the Mughal territory was invaded and plundered by the Iranian ruler Nadia Shah. After Nur ul Ain's death, the diamond was probably among the treasures looted by those close to the Shah. The founder of the Kaja dynasty was able to find and collect some of these jewels. The pink diamond was found in the possession of Nadia Sharukh's blind grandson, Sharukh, and was kept in the Kaja treasury for a long time. However, the last monarch of Iran chose the light of the eye as the center stone of his bride's wedding tiara. Interestingly, the couple Mohammed and Farah Pahlavi had for children. After the overthrow of her imperial consort, leaving the country and the death of her husband, Farah moved to the United States at the invitation of Ronald Reagan. However, an even more magnificent piece of jewelry crowned the beautiful hairstyle of the wife of Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi during her coronation ceremony. To proclaim Shahbanu, the ruler had to crown her head with an authentic crown. Renowned jewelers from all over the world submitted designs for the crown, and the choice was made in favor of the work of French designer Pierre Arples of the Van Cleef and Arples jewelry firm. All the precious material for the creation of this masterpiece belonged to the state and was kept in the caches of the Iranian treasury. The jeweler could not work outside the empire, and he worked in the basement of the central bank in Tehran creating this work of art. The result is a white gold crown weighing almost 2 kilograms, set with 1,469 diamonds, 36 rubies and 105 ocean pearls. At the center of the composition is a huge 150 carat emerald. When the Shah crowned his consort's head with this magnificent crown, he felt an incredible excitement. Farah, in turn, promised herself that she would become a ruler worthy of the title of a true empress. Not only the wives of the last ruler of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, but also his siblings wore beautiful crowns and tiaras. For example, the Shah's twin sister, Shandukt, meaning Princess Ashraf, was also known for her magnificent feminine beauty and exquisite jewelry. 
One of the outstanding pieces of work is her tiara, despite its apparent heaviness, it was characterized by a particular lightness. Bright red rubies, exquisitely cut in a marquee shape, are surrounded by clear diamonds and raised on jeweled pyramids, giving the impression of a true imperial crown. Diamond tops resembling radiant drops add uniqueness to this amazing piece of jewelry. Traditionally, tiaras of this kind contain stones such as spinel with fiery hues, and rarely use rubies as the main element of decoration. However, Ashraf Pahlavi's tiara was striking in its originality, being studded with purple crystals from top to bottom. The princess preferred to display this jewelry only on special ceremonial occasions, not suspecting that the power in Iran would change, the Islamic revolution would come, and their family would find themselves in exile. And the personal treasures of the ruling elite will become the property of the state. The ruby luxury is in safekeeping at the central Tehran bank of the national Iranian treasury. Now let's have a look at this stunning piece of jewelry, which resembles a peacock's multicolored tail or amazing buds in the rays of the sun, hence the name of the tiara sunbeams. The jewel belonged to the Iranian royal family, but despite its beauty, it was rarely seen in public. Let's take a closer look at it. The centerpiece of the jewel is a large spinel in a cushion cut of a delicate pink shade. It is surrounded by a number of small round diamonds, each of which is the basis for a sunbeam. In addition to the latter, we see spikes complemented by drop-shaped emeralds with a perfectly smooth surface. In the center shines the largest stone weighing 50 carats. The design of the tiara does not end there. On the sides of the central composition are small flowers with diamond middles and petals. Transparent crystals adorn the base itself, making the tiara more airy and radiant. Not much is known about the origin of the jewel. It can be assumed that it was made in the second half of the 19th century, as it was during this period that similar designs were popular. For example, diamond beams were used in the creation of aigrettes, very common in those times. The tiara was most likely among the jewelry that Nasser ad-Din Shah Qajar ordered. He had to spend heavily on jewelry, as the royal Iranian treasury was virtually emptied in 1747 after the assassination of Nadir Shah. According to some reports, Queen Consort Jehran wore this tiara, but no corresponding images have survived. The first woman to be pictured wearing the sunbeams was Princess Fatime, the sister of Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. She appeared in this jewel at her brother's coronation in 1967. Interestingly, she was a descendant of the Qajars on her mother's side, so it is only natural that she was the one to wear the tiara. Many of the jewelry pieces of the ruling dynasty came into the possession of the new government in 1979, including the Sunbeams tiara. Today it is in the National Museum, where everyone can admire its beauty. Which of the jewels do you like the most? Write your comments.